episode 162. An arrow flew through the air and landed with a menacing thud in the tree just over her head. The air was suddenly full of the sound of hooves. Harry could feel the forest floor trembling. Umbridge gave a little scream and pushed him in front of her like a shield. He wrenched himself free of her and turned. Around 50 centaurs were emerging on every side, their bows raised and loaded, pointing at Harry, Hermione, and Umbridge, who backed slowly into the center of the clearing, Umbridge uttering odd little whimpers of terror. Harry looked sideways at Hermione. She was wearing a triumphant smile. Who are you? said a voice. Harry looked left. The chestnut-bodied centaur called Megorian was walking toward them out of the circle. His bow, like the others, was raised. On Harry's right, Umbridge was still whimpering, her wand trembling violently as she pointed it at the advancing centaur. I asked who you are, human, said Megorian roughly. I am Dolores Umbridge, said Umbridge in a high-pitched, terrified voice. Senior Undersecretary to the Minister of Magic and Headmistress and High Inquisitor of Hogwarts. You are from the Ministry of Magic, said Megorian, as many of the centaurs in the surrounding circle shifted restlessly. That's right, said Umbridge in an even higher voice. So be very careful. By the laws laid down by the Department for the Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures, any attack by half-breeds such as yourself on a human... What did you call us? shouted a wild-looking black centaur whom Harry recognized as Bane. There was a great deal of angry muttering and tightening of bowstrings around them. Don't call them that, said Hermione furiously, but Umbridge did not appear to have heard her. She pointed her shaking wand at Megorian and continued, Law 15b states clearly that any attack by a magical creature who is deemed to have near-human intelligence and therefore considered responsible for its actions... Near-human intelligence, repeated Megorian, as Bane and several others roared with rage and pawed the ground. We consider that a great insult, human. Our intelligence, thankfully, far outstrips your own. What are you doing in our forest? bellowed the hard-faced gray centaur whom Harry and Hermione had seen on their last trip into the forest. Why are you here? Your forest, said Umbridge, shaking now not only with fright but also, it seemed, with indignation. I would remind you that you live here only because the Ministry of Magic permits you certain areas of land. An arrow flew so close to her head that it caught at her mousy hair in passing. She let out an ear-splitting scream and threw her hands over her head while some of the centaurs bellowed their approval and others laughed raucously. The sound of their wild, neighing laughter echoing around the dimly lit clearing and the sight of their pawing hooves was extremely unnerving. Whose forest is it now, human? bellowed Bane. Filthy half-breeds, she screamed, her hands still tight over her head. Beasts! Uncontrolled animals! Be quiet, shouted Hermione, but it was too late. Umbridge pointed her wand at Megorian and screamed, Incarcerate! Ropes flew out of midair like thick snakes, wrapping themselves tightly around the centaur's torso and trapping his arms. He gave a cry of rage and reared onto his high legs, attempting to free himself while the other centaurs charged. Harry grabbed Hermione and pulled her to the ground, 
Face down on the forest floor, he knew a moment of terror as hooves thundered around him. But the centaurs leapt over and around them, bellowing and screaming with rage. No! He heard Umbridge Sheik. No! I am Senior Undersecretary! You cannot unhand me, you animals! No! He saw a flash of red light and knew that she had attempted to stun one of them. Then she screamed very loudly. Lifting his head a few inches, Harry saw that Umbridge had been seized from behind by Bane and lifted high into the air, wriggling and yelling with fright. Her wand fell from her hand to the ground, and Harry's heart leapt if he could just reach it. But... As he stretched out a hand toward it, a centaur's hoof descended upon the wand and broke it cleanly in half. No! roared a voice in Harry's ear, and a thick, hairy arm descended from thin air and dragged him upright. Hermione, too, had been pulled to her feet. Over the plunging, many-colored backs and heads of the centaurs, Harry saw Umbridge being borne away through the trees by Bane, still screaming nonstop. Her voice grew fainter and fainter until they could no longer hear it over the trampling of hooves surrounding them. And these, said the hard-faced gray centaur, holding Hermione, they are young said a slow, doleful voice from behind Harry. We do not attack fools. They brought her here, Ronan, replied the centaur, who had such a firm grip on Harry, and they are not so young. He is nearing manhood, this one. He shook Harry by the neck of his robes. Please, said Hermione breathlessly, please don't attack us. We don't think like her. We aren't Ministry of Magic employees. We only came in here because we hoped you'd drive her off for us. Harry knew at once from the look on the face of the grey centaur holding Hermione that she had made a terrible mistake in saying this. The grey centaur threw back his head, his back legs stamping furiously and bellowed, You see, Ronan, they already have the arrogance of their kind. So we are here to do your dirty work, how were we, human girl? We were to act as your servants. Drive away your enemies like obedient hounds. No, said Hermione in a horror-struck squeak. Please, I, I didn't mean that. I just hoped you'd be able to, to help us. But she seemed to be going from bad to worse. We do not help humans, snarled the centaur holding Harry tightening his grip and rearing a little at the same time, so that Harry's feet left the ground momentarily. We are a race apart and proud to be so. We will not permit you to walk from here, boasting that we do your bidding. We're not going to say anything like that, Harry shouted. We know you didn't do anything because we wanted you to. But nobody seemed to be listening to him. A bearded centaur toward the back of the crowd shouted, They came here unhoused! They must pay the consequences! A roar of approval met these words, and a dun-colored centaur shouted, They can join the woman! You said you don't hurt the innocent! shouted Hermione, real tears sliding down her face now. We haven't done anything to hurt you! We haven't used wands or threats. We just want to go back to school. Please, let us go back. We are not all like the traitor Ferenze, human girl, shouted the gray centaur, two more neighing roars of approval from his fellows. Perhaps you thought us pretty talking horses. We are an ancient people who will not stand wizard invasions and insults. We do not recognize your laws. We do not acknowledge your superiority. We are... But they did not hear what else centaurs were. For at that moment there came a crashing noise on the edge of the clearing so loud that all of them, Harry, Hermione, and the fifty or so centaurs filling the clearing, looked around. Harry's centaur let him fall to the ground again as his hands flew to his bow and quiver of arrows. Hermione 
had been dropped too, and Harry hurried toward her as two thick tree trunks parted ominously, and the monstrous form of Grop the Giant appeared in the gap. <laughs>